All right, Debbie. Hi, Ron. Hey. So I'm wondering, wondering if you've heard of something that's referred to as the great attrition. Have you heard that phrase? The great attrition or the- Yeah. Um, not, a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not when I'm on my phone anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's this phenomenon. And the reason I'm hurting about it is because my company's hurting from it. And a lot of companies are hurting from it right now. Um, and basically it's this, it's this thing that's been going on starting this year yep. where a lot of people like not signing, just, they're quitting. Yeah, they're quitting. And it's not just people who are like kind of wage, wage hourly workers and they're getting paid more to stay home. So they stay home. It's yep. like white collar workers, engineers, even, um, VPs and just all different kinds of job levels, professionals, um, and they're not necessarily leaving the workforce, but they are leaving their current jobs and maybe going to some other company or like, yep. I guess in some cases, maybe they're leaving. And it's, it's a strange phenomenon, but it's, it's uh, attrition levels are way up yep. um, at my company, at, at per, all companies I know of anyway. <laughs> um, so, but, and, and, and it's hard to pinpoint what's causing this. There's, there's different articles out there in the world that speculate about reasons like that run the gamut of people feel that, that that they're disconnected from their organizations or that they're not valued. They're just simply reflecting on their life because it's yep. been such a change totally. working remotely. Um, and they're just reevaluating what they want to even do with their lives. And um, I mean, if people are really reflecting on what do I want out of life and th those kinds of things, like and that's probably a good thing if they're thinking seriously about that and reevaluating what direction they want to go. It's painful for employers, I can tell you that. And it's like yep. crushingly yeah. difficult to hire. We're trying to hire like as much as fast as many people as we can. And and like in the job market, at least in Silicon Valley, it is like, whoa, if you need a job, come out here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so what do you think about this phenomenon? So it's definitely going on. It's the highest rate of resignations of people leaving jobs ever recorded in the United States. We're currently experienced. Pe more people are quitting, leaving their jobs than ever. At the same time, unemployment rates are pretty low. 4.8% is, is historically very low. It's not as low as before COVID, but it's very, very low. And also add to that, there are more job openings right now. I think 10 million is the number or something like that. More job openings than ever in American history. That is more jobs are going unfilled than ever. Um, so this is again, I think a consequence of COVID in multiple directions. First, the distortions of a COVID economy and of the government intervention are hard to keep track of. But it's not true that all the distortions have to happen or do happen in the markets for goods. They also happen in the markets for labor. Labor gets misallocated, if you will, uh, during times like w when the government does central planning, the government starts uh, you know, intervening like it did on, on a scale unprecedented during, uh, during COVID. Some companies get bailed out that shouldn't exist, other companies uh, uh, you know, small businesses are allowed to go under, but then the, some of them get bailed out and banks do well during this whole period. The whole thing is, it just, it, it's, it, it creates, it distorts all the price signals. All the price signals become meaningless because they're all influenced by the central planners. There's no pure, real price signals anymore. And uh, so, so some of that is, this is kind of a, a people feel like, I can earn more money somewhere else um, because of all these job openings, wages are generally going up, but the employers maybe are not fast enough to adjust wages to their existing employees. So employees are leaving and going somewhere else that does appreciate that. Wages seems to be going up. It's not a bad time to leave a job, wait a little bit, test the market, check out different employers. Since wages are probably gonna be higher in two weeks than they are right now, even if I spend the next two weeks or a month looking for a job, big deal, I'll get compensated for that when I get my higher wage. You know, Amazon can't find enough employee in, enough uh, 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 programmers. So uh, starting salaries at Amazon are going through the roof right now. Um, and yet 
established engineers, their, their wages are not adjusting in proportion because that's not how managers think. So they might feel like, wait a minute, starting person at Amazon is making 150. I have 10 years experience. I'm making two something. That doesn't make any sense. I should be making three, four, 500. I should leave and go test the market. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, again, I will point to immigration laws, big part of the issue here that they're not, immigrants not only come in and they, uh, they fill, out, fill out some of those 10 million open jobs, um, you know, they compete with American workers uh, and, um, and, and, and they also start companies. But, you know, the consequence of all that is that there are massive distortions right now. Not only are there ships out in the ports waiting, but there are also em em employees doing things that they haven't done before. Now, part of that also could be people reevaluating their work-life balance, um, they've spent a lot of time at work, at home. They've spent a lot of time with their family. Maybe they like that. Maybe they want to work part-time. Maybe they want a different job with different stress level. Uh, COVID is certainly was a time of reflection. Um, so it's hard to tell uh, what's going on. But I can tell you that when, when things like this happen, it's usually because there's some distortion in the force, right? And uh, in the economic force created by uh, government policies by uh, by monetary policy, by fiscal policy that is creating this misallocation that's going on. It, it could be that people are introspecting and thinking, and that could be a good thing, maybe not, hard to tell, depending on how rational they are about it. But uh, I think it's more likely to be a, a monetary government, you know, distortion of allocation of resources phenomena and a shortage of workers that is creating uh, these weird incentives for people. But we'll see, yeah. it, it's gonna be interesting to read the studies that come out after this and to see what, looking back, what caused all this. Yeah, I mean, I could say anecdotally, someone in my company, a, a younger person earlier on in her career reached out to me just to kind of like ask me questions about my career path. And she even, she said almost like, the, it was like she read it from an article, but I don't think she did. But she said, I've been just reflecting lately about what I want to do with my life. And I've been laser focused on my career, but I'm reevaluating where I want to go and yep. what I want to do next. And it was like exactly that type of thing. I mean, of course, that's just anecdotal, not statistical. But, but I think there's another component which is it's not quite just so simple as an economic dislocation but it's, it's, it's like a ripple effect from this this thing that the government forced us all to stay in our homes for a year and a half and of course that's gonna have all kinds of unpredicted uh unintended impacts yeah. uh, and then what are the economic ripple effects I, of that gonna be so it's just it's wild, it's it's wild right i know now. that young people in the workforce right now are demanding uh flexibility in terms of remote work they so a lot of the banks in in New York would like the workers to all come back to the office, and workers are saying no. We'll come back three three days, and we want to work two days. There's a big move in Apple among young employees to demand more time at home. I think Apple's standing uh, behind their decision to have everybody come back to the office, but a lot of firms in New York that I know of are not, and they're allowing people. And there's big battles within the firm. Should it be? 20% of the time, 30% of the time, 40% of the time, you're allowed to work from home. And then a lot of young people are going to say, tell with this, you know, in a, in a job market where I can shift jobs, I'm going to go to the employer that's going to offer me the best, uh, the best uh, uh, incentives. And, and particularly when there's no, again, there's no immigration, there's no real competition. Um, you know, what this will be, you know, wages will go up. That's great, particularly for the people who can afford to, to negotiate. But over time, what will happen is if, if the wages are not being driven primarily by increases in productivity, we all suffer from a lower standard of living and a lower quality of life. It might appear that we wanted to be home, but long term we'll be paid less, even if in the short run we're being paid more because we're, we're less productive from home, it turns out. I, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I, should be. I don't know if we're uh, less productive at home. I mean, I think it depends on the job. I, it depends I on who you are and it depends on the job. But I can tell you depends. that a lot of young people who don't have the discipline are going to find that they are less productive working from home.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. But like, I mean, there's definitely, especially out here in Silicon Valley, where people are spending three or sure. four hours a day commuting. I mean, there's three or four hours a day that you're not wasting. So um, it, it varies. It varies. Uh, yeah. and, I th and I think for, I actually think that for older, more seasoned professionals, working from home is more productive. And I think for young people who still need to learn and learn from the elders in many cases, yeah, uh, from home is less productive. Uh, I think it's the young people who are demanding to stay at home who have the most to gain by going to the office. I agree uh, with that. Yeah, yeah, for it's, sure. It's, it's going to be <laughs> fascinating. But you see, I would have a lot more viewers if I said, this is an absolutely unmitigated disaster. This is all caused by fill in the blank, by, by platinum, because platinum is going to go through the roof because of these <laughs> employment patterns. And, uh, you know, life in general is going to suck for the next 20 years. Uh, but I have, I have this great cure for all of that. I don't know. I mean, it just, it feels like I keep saying, I don't know. And that's not what you're supposed to do if you want a lot of subscribers. <laughs> Maybe not, but I appreciate it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of just really, I, know, I mean, I know. <laughs> there's just a lot of weird stuff going on right now. It's kind of hard to say where, where it's leading and some of it will be good. Some of it will be bad. Uh, I, I yeah, agree. I and I, but, I, the right answer. <laughs> but I think there's no politically economically. There's very little good is going to come of this, unfortunately. I mean, yes, some of us will have a better uh, life work balance. Some of us will be able to work more at home. That'll be a good outcome. But generally, uh, the consequence of COVID and the consequence of the last couple of administrations are going to be a lower standard of living and 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 lower economic growth. I think that's I, I think there's no doubt about that, at least not in my mind. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening, you get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Yaron Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.